All right, guys, let me, uh, let me just start with a couple things just to kind of get you up to date. Uh, first of all, we hired a new strength coach uh, last week, uh, Armand Satchel. Uh, Armand comes from South Carolina, uh, was at South Carolina, I think four or five years. That's the second time he was at South Carolina. He was also at uh, Minnesota and uh, Indiana in the Big Ten. He played at the uh, University of Texas, played defensive end linebacker for Mac Brown at Texas. Um, you know, I really took my time with it. I didn't want to hire someone in recruiting uh, just because I didn't have time to do due diligence. You know, Ben Hilgart left and went to Virginia Tech. Um, so we just kept it really the same. You know, Kyle Kudra did a heck of a job uh, maintaining our eight-week off-season program. Uh, but Armand Satchel is our new uh, strength coach. Uh, then, you know, we've had great continuity. You know, probably that's been, uh, you know, maybe the most positive thing is just the continuity we've had, uh, you know, particularly when you compare it to other Mountain West Conference or other what you call mid-major schools. You know, continuity is such an issue. Uh, you look at how these staffs turn over on a yearly basis. Uh, we've had great continuity. And really, to kind of take advantage of that on offense, we've made some, some changes, which I think will be good for us. Um, uh, first of all, Jason Lensmeyer, I've given him the title of uh, run game coordinator. Uh, Apollo Wright's going to coach the quarterbacks. Uh, Bob DeBess is going to coach the wide receivers. Uh, Scott Baumgartner is going to coach the running backs, uh, which is a departure for us. But I, th I, think it's, I think it's really good. You know, we've had all those guys uh, you take Clay, you know, Clay's been here all five years. Bob DeBess has been here going on five years. Um, uh, Lenz has been here five years. Boom and um, Apollo have been here now going on four years. And I think it's good just to kind of hear a different voice in those meeting rooms. And I think it also takes advantage, you know, Apollo played quarterback in college. Uh, Bob DeBess played wide receiver in college. So, you know, I'm anxious to see how that works. But I'm excited about it. So we, we've, we've tweaked some things on our offensive staff. Uh, the defensive staff uh, remains the same. You know, we hired Stan Egan uh, back in December, I guess it was, um, almost immediately after Barry Sachs left and been very pleased with him. You know, I knew what we were getting, but it's, it's been confirmed. Uh, so that's the coaching staff changes. Then as far as our players, uh, Ricky Bennett, um, has decided not to continue to play football. Uh, Ricky is going to be, um, I think he needs another semester, the fall semester to graduate. Uh, right now he plans on staying here, uh, graduating from UNM. Uh, Caleb Kimbrough, because of injuries, uh, will no longer play football. You know, he had, uh, he had two concussions in high school. Uh, he was in, on, in a car accident here in January. Uh, where he had another concussion. Uh, he's coming off um, the ACL. Uh, it's, it's amazing, you know. I think he had t his sisters both had, one of them had three ACL surgeries, and the other one I think he had two ACL surgeries. But Caleb is, um, Caleb's already graduated. You know, it's remarkable. He, he graduated in less than three years. Uh, he's already in a, a master's program in business. Uh, he's, he wants to stay here and finish his master's. So right now, um, you know, we're exploring if he stays on medical scholarship, uh, which will keep him from playing, but I am hope we're going to be able to do that. Uh, but he's another guy like Garrett Adcock that's graduated in three years. Uh, Steven Galvan, uh, a linebacker from California, uh, is going to try to drop down and play at a lower level. Uh, I think that's it. Other than that, um, I, think we're, I think we're all the same. Um, position changes, uh, Q Drennan, uh, you know, he played quarterback in high school in El Paso. Uh, we're going to give him a shot at quarterback. He played wide receiver last year, red shirted, really excited about Q. You know, he's got a lot of energy. Um, he did some things on the scout squad for us, uh, that made him stand out. Uh, so he's going to be a quarterback. Uh, I think that's it as far as the changes, you know, we're going to practice like we did last year, we'll practice in the mornings. Uh, we're going to practice 15. You get 15 practices, 12 of them in pads. 
uh, three of them in shorts. Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week will be in shorts. The first two days, Friday, will be in pads. Uh, practice will be open. Uh, we're going to have some type of spring game. Uh, we don't want to interfere with that tractor pool or whatever's going out there, which causes us a little bit of grief. Uh, so we're going to try to do it maybe a week earlier. Um, so other than that, just excited, you know, excited to get back and uh, continue to put this team together. Uh, you know, you watch all these teams, uh, whether it's football, whether it's basketball, you know, you watch the NCAA tournament, uh, you watch the women's tournament, I watch it all. Um, you're just so conscious of what type of team you want to have and what kind of identity you want to have. And, um, you know, we're almost maniacal about that. We, we really are. You know, we talk to our team every day about what style of team we need to be to win, uh, what, time, what style of team we envision ourselves being, and we continue to try to build on that. You know, we're a team, um, we're moving forward. You know, we're getting better. I do think the best is ahead. But again, I don't know that the margin for error is ever going to be extremely high, but that's okay. Um, defensively, we made some improvements. Um, you know, the statistics, I guess you can throw out there, fourth most improved defense in the country, yards per game. You take a little bit of tongue in cheek because we haven't been real good, so it's, but it is a positive. Um, you know, the negative plays that we've created uh, are, very, are positive. Uh, offensively, you know, we're a big play team, maybe, maybe as big play explosive a team as there is in college football. Um, just to kind of refresh you, uh, last year we had 22 runs over 30 yards. It put us number two in the country. We had eight runs over 50 yards. It put us number two in the country. We had six runs over 60 yards, put us number two in the country. And I think we had six runs over 60 yards that put us number two in the country. And then we were number one in the country with three passes over 80 yards. So we're an explosive team uh, on offense. We're an attacking team on defense. Um, with that said, consistency, consistency, consistency on offense. Uh, last year, we probably in some ways took a step back a little bit on just being able to consistently run the ball. You know, it was kind of big play or nothing. Uh, there were several games where it was nothing, quite honestly. Um, we've got to become more consistent running the ball. We're too hit or miss. We had too many no yardage gain plays on offense. We have to continue to improve play action passing. Um, number of interceptions we had, I think we had 15 interceptions on the season, which is ridiculous. You know, that was about 104th worst in college football of interceptions. We don't throw the ball that much. Uh, with that said, we did make some plays throwing it. But again, we were hit or miss throwing it. Uh, so the next step for us is to be consistent, consistent, consistent on offense. Uh, we do have a lot of players coming back on defense. Um, we need to raise the bar uh, because to win, regardless of what sport it is, you have to be able to play defense. You have to be able to get stops consistently. Uh, but I think we're moving in the right direction. But again, you know, what's your identity as a team? What's your identity as a team? We've built an identity. Uh, we're not quite there yet. Um, we have to know ourselves as well as we know our opponents. And we are what we are. And the continuity in our program definitely helps that moving forward. Um, but there's a, there's a maniacal hunger uh, to not be mediocre. And that's easy to say. That's easy to say. But um, this is a hungry football program right now because we got a little taste of it and we want to have more of it. So with that said, Rick. Uh, that, that first string, you put those two offensive lines together uh, four years later, four and a half, whatever it is, uh, from position group to position group, uh, do you have enough people to kind of do it? Get what you need yeah. in the we do. You know, the offensive line is a great example, um, which is probably our number one emphasis this spring is continuing to build the offensive line. You know, we still haven't totally recovered from losing Johnny and Toye before the start of last season. We have a lot of numbers on the offensive line now. 
you know, part of it is uh, moving um, Chris Lewis over. Uh, and uh, Chris Lewis and Jack Ziltz over uh, helped us. We're bringing in five offensive linemen. But we have some young offensive linemen that we redshirted, but we're young. We have two new junior college players that are here. Um, we're young, though. We're young. We're young. But we certainly have numbers. Uh, you know, so we, we've built that back up, and it should be a productive spring. I don't know how much we're going to actually scrimmage, but, but um, you know, it should be a competitive spring. Coach, bowl week was exciting. Bowl game day, the atmosphere exciting, big time. You played so well in the game. Following that, I felt that Lobo football in the community was relevant again, more than relevant. What's your feeling as you cross the state and the country? Well, I think you guys probably have a better pulse on that than I do. You know, you, you, you probably hear more diverse opinions than I do because I kind of shut out the negative opinions. I think that's how you survive in this profession is to try to try to make decisions based on your own interpretation of things and not listen to too many other people. So I think you guys probably have a good feel. You know, I definitely think we have momentum. I definitely think we have momentum. And I, and I judge that more from – just what I see in this room, you know, we meet in here every day with our players and, you know, what I feel here in here is, is a positive momentum. Uh, but I also have the feeling of, again, I, I talk about knowing ourselves. Um, other than Mississippi Valley State last year, there's probably not a game we won that, quite honestly, we couldn't have lost. With that said, there's probably not a game we lost that we couldn't have won. In fact, I know there isn't a game we couldn't have won, including Arizona State, if we'd have played better. So we're still not there, and we've got to be even more hungry than we were because now the expectations are higher. But we definitely have momentum. Uh, I, I think we're putting a pretty good product out there. I think we're pretty fun to watch. Uh, I think people appreciate our style of play. Uh, a lot of people got a chance to see us play outside of this area late in the season, you know, uh, those late, late, late night Saturday night ESPN games at Boise and at home to Air Force. And then certainly the, um, the bowl game on ESPN, the first one of the bowl season, gave us tremendous exposure. And I think people picture us playing hard, and I think people picture us hard-nosed and have a little edge to us in how we play. And that's something that we have to keep and we have to build on. Coach, you mentioned your uh, staff. Um, obviously, recently had an off-season incident with one of your staff. So were, were there any consequences involved? And how do you approach it when one of your staff gets involved with an off-season? Yeah, you know, first of all, I have tremendous respect for Apollo Wright. Uh, not only is he a great coach, he's one of my favorite people. Uh, with that said, Apollo is a grown man, and it was very disappointing. And it was a terrible mistake. Um, he has taken responsibility for it, as I expected him to. Uh, I'm not going to do anything to interfere with the process. It's still an ongoing process. Uh, Apollo's a grown man. He can speak for himself. Uh, he had a chance to get up today. He spoke to our football team about it. It was our first chance back together from spring break. So um, extremely disappointed. Um, it's frustrating. Uh, but yet people make mistakes, and good people make mistakes. I know in anything, you can take a negative and turn it into a positive. And I know today Apollo took the first step of doing that. Uh, but I'm not going to minimize it. I'm not going to minimize it. Uh, it. It's not okay. It's not something that's accepted. He sits in here every day and sees what I do, I do to the team. And that's the first thing you get up here and talk to our team about. Uh, but we all know that good people make mistakes. And a lot of times it's more important how you react to it. And thank God it wasn't more serious than it was. And he does have a chance to respond to it in a positive way. Coach, you said it was, it was ongoing. If, it, if uh, it doesn't end in his favor, like if he gets slapped on the head for something or, or if something happens with him, is anything going to change with you or does it just stay like it is now? Well, I, I fully expect Apollo Wright to be here next year and be a part of our coaching staff. So uh, 
I think there'll probably be, in fact, I know there'll be some penalty put on there. Um, uh, and it won't just be a slap on the wrist. There, there will be a penalty, but I fully expect him to remain and be a part of our coaching staff. And I think he'll even be a better coach and a better role model because of it. Coach, uh, I know things can change, but do you anticipate playing any true freshman this coming season or anybody that will be in the mix for starting position? You know, I, I, I don't think so. You know, again, like you said, things can change. You know, Delane Hart came in here. A nice Martin came in here. Some of those guys. Now, they were junior college guys but played right away. Um, I hope it's not because of necessity, like it's been in the past. So if it's if it is, it's because they're better than what we have out there now. Uh, but I really don't think that's going to happen. Um, we do have. I mean, I'm I'm really excited about seeing the group of offensive linemen that are coming in. I think you guys, the first time you see us practice in the fall, you'll see that we definitely brought in some length, some big, tall offensive linemen, and some athletic offensive linemen. Um, but, but uh, you know, a punter's coming in. You know, we signed a punter who happens to be left-footed, which is, which is actually a factor because that ball spins the opposite way. I know we had a problem over at Arizona State with their left-footed punter. Um, New Mexico State had one a couple of years ago. It just killed it, um, an Australian-style punter. Uh, so, uh, you know, a punter's coming in. But I don't, I don't really expect any new guys to just walk in here and play. You know, I think we're a little farther along than that. What type of role do you see Cole Gauchy, uh finding through spring and, and into the fall at tight end? Yeah, excited. Excited about Cole. You know, he, uh, he was up to about 265. I told him to get back down to 255. Uh, you know, just, just like today, you know, of, of starting with our punt team, where now Cole will be one of those personal protectors or one of the shields back there. You know, just the flexibility that that big body gives you with a guy that can also touch the ball. You know, we had five punts last year where we maintained possession. In other words, we were punting the ball, but we got the ball back for our offense, which if they kept stats in the country, I bet that's number one in the country. Through fake punts, through fumble recoveries on punts, um, but Cole's a big body that can also get his hands on the ball and do some things. So, you know, just knock on wood that he stays healthy. He's had a great off season, uh, but re really anxious to see Cole Gauchi and how he fits in because that tight end position is such a critical position for us. But I also kind of like to see him get his hands on the football a little bit because, as we all know, he is extremely, extremely hard to tackle. Is he as the cruiser type, or is he more Edling type, but maybe catch the ball? Yeah, or? he's both. He's both. But he's starting out as that cruiser. You know, he's athletic. He's, he's the ideal guy when you draw it up now. He's, he's, he's physical. Um, he's athletic. He's tough. He can catch. So it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. You know, I'm glad we redshirted him last year, and uh, now he's got an opportunity, hopefully, to have his best year of college football because he deserves it. Coach, how, how has he embraced that position? Where have you seen that? He's, he's an unbelievable kid. I mean, Cole Gauchy is. You know, we have some leaders on this team. Um, well, we, we have some leaders. We have some leaders. You, know, you look at Cole Gauchy, you look at Dakota Cox, uh, Lamar Jordan. Uh, I mean, I can keep going. I, you know, Nick Devonzo. I mean, Nick Devonzo is a guy that, oh, man, you, you talk about. I don't know if I've ever seen a guy. And he still has a ways to go now. I mean, he, he's, not, he's not polished just yet, but how far he's come. You know, we actually put his name in a, a list of a guy that can be a potential leader. Um, you know, we, we've got some leaders on this football team, and Cole Gauchy's definitely, definitely right there at the top of the list. Big picture, what do you hope to accomplish this spring? Continue to build our identity. Continue to build our identity, you know, and, and that's, that's a team that people like to watch. I mean, you guys know when you watch a team, if it's well coached. You, you, know, you, know, you, you, know, you know if it's a team that's unselfish. You know if it's a team that the chemistry is right. And that's the number one, number one thing is to just keep building our identity and develop. 
you know, develop every day and have some fun doing it. You know, we, we've accomplished some things. Um, it's time to continue to improve on it. But what more, what more do you want? You know, we, we put a lot into this and we made some improvement. I just want to have some fun, keep developing some guys, but most of all, continue to realize what it's going to take for us to win. Coach, you talked about the, <clears throat> the momentum you guys have gotten. Is there anything you've noticed, like, uh, as far as during the offseason that made you excited about seeing the guys on the field now with their pads on or, or whatever? If you're doing this you thing? know, I, I think, again, um, there's definitely a correlation between how you do things off the field and how you perform on the field. And, you know, we had a couple incidents that, um, again, I'll say it, it's frustrating, it's disappointing. But I'll say this, th this team has been unbelievable when it's come to taking care of their business off the field and doing the right things. And that's the biggest I, thing I see. You know, there, there's definitely a culture that's advantageous to winning. There's definitely a culture around here that's advantageous to winning. And um, that's the most exciting thing, and, th and that's what I see. Coach, you have three quarterbacks that got playing time last year. How, how do you anticipate working them all three games? Yeah. You know, I think we've come to the realization that we're going to let it rip. You know, there's nothing that says Lamar Jordan can't be in there and we run triple option and we throw play action. There's nothing that says you can't put Austin Apodaca in there and maybe he goes more of the tempo spread stuff. Um, maybe Q Drennan um, or maybe Jawan Lawson adds a third phase to that. But I'm not going to hold back on it. You know, that, that thing of saying, boy, I really want one guy to be the guy. I really want, you know, if it's not, it's not. And we're going to put him in there at different times and let it rip. And, um, you know, we have two other quarterbacks coming in, two guys that are high school kids that, you know, we thought had some unique qualities to fit into our offense. So I'm not going to be bashful about putting guys in there. I'm not. You know, we're going to put them in there and let it rip. And if a guy has his niche and he can do some things really well, then he's going to go in there and do those things really well. And that's what it's going to be. So I'm kind of anxious to watch. I, I really am. I'm anxious to watch. Um, I'm, I'm anxious to watch what Apollo Wright can do with our quarterbacks, uh, just on a different voice with throwing mechanics, uh, a different voice on footwork. Um, you know, so I'm excited about the quarterback position, but I'm not afraid to play one, two, or three guys in any game. I'm not afraid to do that. Is that kind of like the running back situation where you have five or six guys? That... Same thing. I think, that's a, I think that's a great analogy. You know, uh, boy, you, you lose Presley. And, and Presley, what a, what a unique, unique guy he is. Explosive, powerful. But all of a sudden, you know, you have a Richard McCorley that's a 225-pound back that I think is really, really hard to tackle. Really hard to tackle. Little Chestnut. I mean, Little Chestnut's explosive. Tyrone Owens. Uh, Romel Jordan. Terion Gibson's 185 pounds. Um, same thing. You know, all of them have a little different style. All of them do some things a little bit differently. Not afraid to play any of those guys. Um, one other, uh, um, Woodhouse, Daquan Woodhouse has moved to defense. Something he really wanted to do. I'll tell you, he's been impressive in the offseason workouts. He's lost some weight. Uh, but Woodhouse will also play probably about 25% offense. So he's going to be on defense. You know, if he's a starter on defense, that may affect that percentage a little bit. But he's another guy that can do some things with his hands on the ball. And so we're going to practice him about 25% on offense. By position on safety? Uh, we're not sure. You know, he ran really well. He ran really well. Probably nickel. He's probably going to be a nickel for us. Yeah, you know, Nias Martin, it's, a, um, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting situation. Uh, you know, there's an accusation that's been made. Um, obviously, no charges have been filed. Uh, again, I'm not minimizing that. Any accusation we take very, very seriously. Uh, um, but no charges have been filed yet. So he's still a part of our football team. Uh, what I have done, and I've tried to remain consistent on this, is uh, if you are charged with something and it's a major 
crime or a felony, um, you're suspended from the football team until you have proven your innocence. Uh, but there have been no charges, and I think it's I think it's important to keep in mind, even if charges are filed, and I have no idea if they will or not, that still doesn't mean that you're you're guilty. But at this point, um, really, what it is is just accusations, uh, although very public, <laughs> are nothing more than just that. You want to still be a running team. You just said that a little while ago, but and you increased the passing a little. Are you still looking to increase it a little bit more, though, uh, uh, add some more to the package? Yeah, I think, you know, we made some throws. Uh, I don't know about add so much. It's just be more productive and less mistakes when we throw it. You know, we cannot throw the interceptions we threw. You know, Austin threw one up at Boise last year that comes to mind. It was just ridiculous. And he knew at the moment he threw it in the bowl game. You know, you can talk about we played well in the bowl game. We threw three interceptions in the bowl game. Uh, we get the ball after the turnover in the first quarter. We have Carlos wide open on first and ten. Lamar under throws and it's intercepted. We throw the play action coming out of this end zone, the south end zone on first and ten. We get a little confusion on the route with Reese. Uh, Lamar throws it, they interception, they score the next play. We have to become more consistent, more consistent. Uh, we, we may not ever have the highest percentage because we don't throw a lot of little short passes, um, but we have to eliminate the interceptions. And, and again, I just think improving on the play actions, both schematically, which I think we're going to we're spend a lot of time this offseason, schematically on play actions. I think there's some things we can do to take advantage of people more schematically. Um, but also just the, the throwing and catching of it. I'll tell you another thing that we have that, you know, we have, we have upgraded our wide receiver position. You know, we have some talented wide receivers on this team. I mean, Delane Hart uh, is a guy that ran faster than what we probably anticipated he would run. Uh, we timed all our guys in the 40 right here before spring break. Delane Hart's a big guy that goes up and gets the ball. Uh, Matt Corals. Matt Corals can fly. Might have been our fastest kid. Matt Corals, who's, you know, we've redshirted him. He, he, last year he had the hamstring. Matt Corals can be a big time receiver. A uh, Patrick Reed, we moved from quarterback to wide receiver. A new, the freshman that we redshirted last year. Uh, you know, we have some tall, talented wide receivers. Another guy that's made strides. He's not very big, he's not very fast, is Chris Davis. You know, Chris Davis is improving on a, as a football player. I've got a lot of respect for him. Um, so, you know, we, we've got some talented wide receivers that I'm anxious to see. Uh, you know, another guy, Rick, uh, Dyson Shamira, we moved him to tight end. You know, his dad was an all-pro tight end. His brother's a tight end at Michigan State. Um, he, had, he had the labrum kind of going into that. Uh, Dyson Shamira will not have contact but he's going to be out there every day. Um, Gurgle, we had the shoulder done back in the fall. He'll be out there. Uh, not full contact, but he'll be out there every day. Uh, the two that won't participate um, is Reno Henderson. He had his shoulder done. And uh, uh, Cody Baker. Cody Baker hurt his shoulder, a labrum, uh, in the bowl game. So Cody Baker and Reno will not do much in the spring. Uh, everybody else will be out there. Um, um, Shamira Gurgle. <coughs> he's Patrick Reed's good. Patrick good to go. Looks like there was one more shoulder. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm. No, I think that's it. Corals will start out. He's a little slow with the hamstring. Coach, how much of your offense struggles with the running game last year? Sort of just back up from the valve trying to catch up with your offense. Yeah, yeah, Greg, it did. You know, it, it did. You know, I think it was a couple things. It's funny, you know, when you watch option teams from different conferences, people will lock into a way they play. In other words, we studied Georgia Tech, and every team in the ACC plays them in kind of a four-two hip cover four thing. We've gone through it where teams have played us in 4-2-1 in the middle, 
team started to play us a little 4-2, four, 4-3, four, cover four. And there is a little bit with anybody of you get some visual and video confirmation on how to play them. So it gets, it gets a little bit easier, you know, because there's more video. There's more video of how teams played you and had success. That's one piece of it. Uh, the second piece of it, I thought our offensive line really did a remarkable job. I mean, for Olden Camp and Romine to step up, both 50-year players, hadn't played hardly at all. To step up and play the way they played was outstanding. But we did lose two starters on the offensive line. But the third thing, third thing, we were sloppy too. We, we were not as oiled as we've been in the past. You know, we were not as oiled. And I go back, you know, Cole was a guy, you know, he might not throw it real good, but I tell you, he was oiled in the run game. Now. He was so oiled. He got you in the right play, and you weren't going to have many negative plays with Cole. So, Greg, it's a combination of things. People catching up with us, um, the offensive line, and then we were a little sloppy. We were a little sloppy in our mechanics. Um so we've, we've really addressed all three of those things, starting with schematically. We, we do have to tweak some things and do some things a little bit differently that I think really fits our personnel that I'm anxious to really watch. Coach, your D-line really improved over the year last year. How much more, I mean, not how much more do they need, but uh, where do you see that going? Should continue to improve. Uh, you know, we have three nose guards. Uh, Taylor Timmons has really... Uh, Again, fortunate, not fortunate, we made ourselves do it. We redshirted him out of many. That's going to pay off for us, I think. I think Taylor Timmons right now is the, by far the best he's been. Uday has played a lot of football for us. And then we redshirted Johnny Williams last year. Now, Johnny Williams is a tough, tough football player. We were able to redshirt him, so we have three nose guards. Um, then you look at the defensive line. Um, um, Cody Baker, we're... It's unfortunately had the shoulder because he does need to get bigger and stronger. But he had a really an outstanding season. Nick's played a lot. Garrett Hughes has played a lot. Kenny Okonkwo had the injury, but he's played a lot. Ewing Simmons we redshirted last year. Well, I had to because of the peck. So we've got some guys. We have some experience up there. Um, uh, and we have two or three high school kids coming in that I think will help us. So, you know, I think we're going to continue to improve. And I think... Uh, you know, I don't think people are going to be able to knock us around. You know, I think we're at the point now where we can, we can pretty much hold our own against whoever we play. And I think that's the most encouraging thing. You know, I think we can hunker down in there and play now. Uh, and that, that's a positive. Secondary was an emphasis to improving. What about the improvement there? What do you see coming up? Well, you know, we lose Cranston. Uh, which, you know, Cranston played a lot of football for us. He really did. Tremendous respect for Cranston Jones. We've got, we've got just about everybody else back. You know, we've got our entire, that's really on defense we do. We, we basically have our old defense back. So I think just continuing to be better. You know, we know what we are. We know what we're going to play. We just need to improve and raise the bar. Raise the bar, raise the bar, because you're not going to win. You're not going to win if you can't stop it. You're not going to win. That doesn't mean you hold them to 14 anymore, but you're not going to win if you can't stop them. Coach, personal question. Because of the success last year, another year older, been in the business a while, do you still have that burning desire, that fire, or is it even more enhanced than life? Yeah, I think it's more. I really do. I, I, I think it's more because uh, you don't want to take a step back. You do not want to take a step back. I mean, momentum is so hard to get. And there's such a big difference between winning and losing. You know, particularly winning and what it was in the past at times, not competitive. So now you know that you have a chance to win each and every week. I really believe we do. Uh, but I also know there's not much a margin for error. So uh, I think myself and this coaching staff, I think we're hungrier than we've ever been. Because we don't want to take a step back. And that's that's the bottom line. So with all the team kind of coming back together, do you have anything you can planned or anything as far as you know, honoring Markel or anything like that? 
hopefully we play our butt off. You know, hopefully we play our butt off. I, I've heard a lot of guys talk about it. Um, I, think that, I think that's said right there. You know, and I've noticed, I've noticed I.B. Brown. I, I don't think Markell's death affected anybody quite like it affected I.B. Brown. I mean, physically. I mean, the kid probably dropped 15 pounds. And since Markell's memorial here on campus, I've seen I.B. turn the page and have tremendous energy every day, uh, tremendous focus every day. And, you know, I kind of use him as a barometer of our team. So nothing out of the ordinary. You know, we're going to do some things. You know, we've um, um, enclosed his locker and nobody's going to wear 22. Uh, we're going to put something on the helmet. Uh, some of those things. But you and I both know the biggest thing we can do is you know, be the very best we can be and not take one day for granted. And uh, that's what we're going to try to do. Coach, reason why you, up on Markell, you talked about Markell's inconsistency sometimes being maddening, but he was a great playmaker for you. Yeah. And you're looking for somebody back there like that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Markell, Markell was an unbelievable guy. I mean, uh, you talk about hard-headed and stubborn. Maybe as stubborn as any I've ever been around. But he usually was right. He usually was right. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he was a playmaker he, he, on both ways. I mean, he'd be the first one to tell you. I mean, he made some great plays, but he all, he, he made some great plays for them too. Uh, and, and, again, he was a young guy, though. But I do think we have some playmakers back there. I, you know, I think you're going to see that uh, – you know, Daniel Henry's a guy now that's 194 pounds that, again, we were able to redshirt and how key that is. Um, don't underestimate Gurgle. You know, Gurgle's a guy that we redshirted last year that can really run. It's a playmaker. Uh, you know, we, we've got some guys back there. You know, we, we don't have an excuse that we don't have enough guys. We, we've got enough guys. I'm just going to ask about Reese why you're going to miss him, but do you have somebody else that you have in thought that could be like Reese White right now if it's thinking about somebody? Because uh, that guy was amazing. Yeah, Cole, you know, Cole. is a football player. Yeah. Now, the thing about Reese, Reese crossed all lines of leadership, you know, whether it was ethnicity, whether it was younger guys, older guys, didn't matter. You know, Reese was Reese and tremendous leader. Um, you know, David and I was that, uh, you know, so, but so Dakota's that, Cole's that, Lamar Jordan's that, uh, you know, but what you miss, miss about Reese was just every day by example, never taking a lazy step. I mean, never taking a lazy step, you know, unique guy, unique guy. And honestly, he found the right position because there's a lot of Reese Whites that go unnoticed because where do they fit? You know, you're not really a wide receiver. You're not really a defensive back. What are you? He found his niche here in this offense. And it was great for him and it was great for us. Now, the sad part is we couldn't redshirt. <laughs> I mean, that's the remarkable thing is that Reese White and David and I are already gone. You know, now Cole's back because we were able to redshirt him. Now, the fourth year in, at least we were able to redshirt him. But the amazing part is those guys come into your program. And they're gone in four years because they're your ideal 50-year guys, ideal 50-year guys. So hopefully, you know, the numbers will bear out that we're just able to red show up more guys as we move forward. That dynamic or, uh, returner, as Carlos was, you have to just trust another guy that's returning the ball too, so it's a matter of just finding the right guy to plug in to your, to your teams. And yeah, I think, Greg, that's a key. I think that's a good point, you know. Um, We've got some guys to put back there. And we also have a high school kid coming in that we're excited about putting back there. But Carlos was unique because, I mean, the bottom line with Carlos, he was going to bring it out. Like in the ball game, I mean, they could have kicked the thing in the third row. Now he was going to go up in that third row and bring it back out, which, you know, he might have got carried away, but he was fearless. You know, he was fearless. Uh, we've got some guys to put back there. But are they the unique guy? that Carlos was. Uh, one other guy that's kind of deciding right now is Ridge Jones. You know, Ridge has 
we were we redshirted Ridge one year. Um, he's running outdoor track right now. Ridge is still deciding whether to come back and play a fifth year or not. Uh, he may go somewhere and be a fifth year transfer somewhere and play. Um, we've kind of been in discussions, and I'm going to do whatever's best for him, and obviously I'll do whatever's best for him. So he's kind of deciding right now what he's going to do. Because he's the guy that comes to mind as maybe a potential returner back there. Before you wrap it up, so is there a general question you tell your fans out there? Our football team will do the following. We represent this. Our personality is this. Because obviously we work in big sell tickets out there. Well, I kind of, you know, that thing, that little, that little thing over there, out work, out hit, out discipline. And one helmet might not be the sexiest, might not be the flashiest, but I don't know that Albuquerque, New Mexico is the sexiest or the flashiest, right? So I think that's something that's sustainable here in this program. And I think our style of play exemplifies that. And hopefully people see that and hopefully people relate to that. And that's, to me, the thing we're most maniacal about. Outwork, out hit, out discipline. Know who we are. Know who we are and continue to build on it. I hope people appreciate it. All right? All right, man. Thank you, guys. Thanks,